Praise God. Appreciate the Lord's presence this morning. It's another one of those steps of faith here this morning. Um, I had a couple of things come to me. There's a, there's a chorus um, I wanted to read um, in his time, if I can find it. But there's, there's a scripture that, that came to me too, and I want to share that. Um, I know what's in here, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's on page 38. Um, before I read that, though, um, I want to go to Galatians chapter 4 because uh, I don't know, I was reading, uh, this came to me while I was writing somebody downstairs uh, trying to encourage them. And I never, I never saw this before, just the way this is worded. Um, and I believe it's the Lord. But in verse 4, um, you know, along the lines that, that Carl was talking about there, how we need, how Christ is, it, is the thing, that, he's the one we need. He's all we need. You know, getting him, or I don't want to say getting him like we can go out and buy him, but having him, I mean, that is the goal. That should be the goal of every person on this earth. Unfortunately, it's not. And, you know, and we don't, I think, you know, we don't like the fact that God's the one that does the choosing. Um, I think, uh, you know, um, not every, you know, Jesus said not... Um, he told the disciples over there, and I think it's Matthew, um, well, I'm not sure, Matthew 13, I think is where it, where it is, but he told him, he said, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. And he said, because unto you it's been given, but unto them it's not been given. And we don't like the fact that God has complete control. Um, as, as human beings down here on earth, as far as we're concerned, we don't know who is and who's not chosen. That's, that's not our business. That's not our call. We shouldn't look on people saying they're, they're chosen or not chosen. That's God's business. As far as I'm concerned, I want to I share Christ, what Christ has done for me. If Christ comes into your heart, you should be an open book. And, and the book that people should be reading would be Jesus Christ and Him crucified in our life. That's it. That's the total sum of, of what we should be about and what we should desire every day when we get up. But uh, I just wanted to read this and just share this. I'm not going to be up here long, but uh, in verse 4, it says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order that he might redeem those that were under the law. Because we're all under the law before we come to Christ. Everybody on this earth is under some law before they come to Christ. You're under something. Something is uh, against you. But Christ came to redeem us from that law that we might receive the adoption as sons. Okay? And then the next verse is the one that, that just, the way it's worded here. It says, and because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Now notice that scripture didn't say, and because God sent forth the spirit of his uh, son into your hearts, you are sons. He said, because you are sons. God knew you before the foundation of the world, before he even sent his spirit to you. He knew you as a son. He's had his eye on you ever since you were born. And he knows the exact time to come and get you and claim you and draw you. And the thing of, thing of it is, you know, when we, we fight it. Huh? You know, I, I fought it for years. And... You're not going to win. <laughs> yeah, I hate to bust your bubble, but you're not going to win. You're going to have a hard time because you're resisting. But I'm going to tell you something. God's going to win. And I, uh, that gives me great rest in my heart. But because you are sons, God sent forth his spirit of his sons into your heart, crying, Have a father. Therefore, you know, you're no longer a slave. You're not a slave anymore to this world. You're not a slave to your lust, your passions. You're not a slave anymore to the law that had control over you, that, that condemns you. You're, you're now set free. You are a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Um, this little chorus here, it came to me because of what we've been, uh, you know, Phil's, what Phil's been sharing about. You know, we're children of God. When Christ does come into your heart, when you are born again, 
by his spirit, by that incorruptible seed, when that takes place in you, then you're going to become what you're going to become, and you don't have to try to do it, you know? And this, this, this song here just came to me. It says, in his time, in his time. We want to get it done maybe a lot quicker. We know a better way to do Lord, I know a better way to do this for me to get here. You know, why aren't you cooperating? <laughs> you know, like we can instruct God. We just need to learn to wait on him. But it says, in his time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day, every day we get up. Show me, Lord, every day that you're teaching me your ways. Now, that goes back to what Mike was saying there about taking the yoke upon him and learning of him. Yes. Take that yoke upon you and learn of me. We've got to learn. But how are you being taught every day? How do you think God is doing the teaching? He's doing the teaching through the things that you go through and suffer down here in this life. He's doing the teaching because he's giving you his word. And he wants you to take that word. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The word of God is something that we need to learn to live by. Period. You know, not, not, circum, not, not what we think up here. Because our, I mean, let's face it. We're living in a world that's against Christ. We are living with a carnal mind that's against Christ. You know, we're in, a, we're in a struggle, we're in a battle. My God, how much do we need this word? We need it. Show me every day, Lord. That should be our prayer when we get up. Show me today, Lord. Show me how you're, how you're, what you're trying to teach me. Show me, Lord. Help me, help me just to surrender. Like we talked about, the uh, saying this morning, you know, be the center. Be my God. Be my path. Teach me uh, that you're teaching me your ways, that you'll do just what you say. <laughs> Praise God. He who has begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. He has promised in your time, in your time, in your time, you make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, my life to you I bring. This is where it starts. Offer up your life a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You're holy because he is, you are born again of the Spirit of God. You are holy. Offer up your life to him, holy, an acceptable, offer, an acceptable offering unto God, which is your reasonable service. And he says, may each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time. I'm going to tell you, once that happens, you start singing to the Lord, it is a lovely thing. <laughs> It's a lovely thing because the spirit that he has sent forth into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, is behind it. That's what makes it lovely. I'll tell you, I just, you know, I appreciate this this morning. God just wants to encourage us. And God wants to speak to those that he's drawn. God wants you to come. He wants you to come and partake. All things are ready. All you've got to do is just come and partake. I'll tell you, I appreciate this this morning.